what is going on guys it is friday night i'm still in my work clothes but either way we're gonna get those glasses high in the sky because it's time for last call What is going on, guys? It is Friday. We have reached the end of the work week, the end of the school week, the end of the comic week. But we're about to hit final order cutoff again this coming Monday night. And we're going to talk about our 10 picks for books that are hitting that final order cutoff, aren't we, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. But I got I to gotta argue one thing with you. I don't think this is the end of the comic week, Brian. I think this is the middle. You got that weekend. That is comic Haven. I think the start of the comic week is Wednesday. You got to be in midweek form right now, Brian. Yeah, you got a point. I'm sure I'll make it out to my LCS again to get some of those stragglers that I haven't gotten any picked up yet this week, as well as looking at eBay and online for any good sales or books that you can find cheap. But either way, books that are heading final cutoff Monday. We're talking about our 10 picks as well as those additional printings. And we're starting right now with Wicked Things from Boom. This is Wicked Things number one. It's going to have three different covers for it. And it's got that killer creative team from Giant Days, right? Right. And this is a book that probably 90% of the people who watch us would overlook in previews. It's, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about it, because it isn't a book that's aimed at, say, your mid-30s to 40s adult, which is what most of the people, according to analytics, who are watching us, um, specifically male, um, who you are out there. So... I understand that, but here's the thing about this book. This is a number one title from Boom Under Their Boom Box, which is kind of like the old Kaboom. Um, it's more of a younger themed kind of aimed books, but you see, so you get kind of that cartoony art style, which does tend to kind of turn off some of that, like, a, uh, you know, like I said, like 30 year old male kind of um, uh, crowd. But at the same point, this is a book that as soon as I looked over the solicit, my oldest daughter got really excited about um, and, and, and why not? You're talking about like a 19-year-old girl who's like a savant detective who's headed to Oxford um, until she's framed for murder. Now she's got to find the murderer to prove she's innocent. So it's kind of like a, a, um, a trope that we've heard before, but from the perspective of a 19-year-old girl, obviously a lot of people aren't going to uh, um, get hype about that. If, Like I said, uh, it, it is what it is. But so seeing how excited my daughter got about that, I do think there is an audience for this. And while that may not immediately be the comic buying audience, it, this could be something that gets optioned. This could be something that uh, becomes whether television movie with the amount of streaming services we have today, um, because they're constantly looking for programming that's aimed at that younger demographic. I agree. I think it's aimed at that younger demographic. And for that point alone, me personally, I'm going to sit this one out, but I did like the solicit for it. I can see how it's targeted that younger generation and why it's a great pick for FOC this week. Yeah, and definitely dads of a young daughter since maybe one to pick up and kind of introduce to comic books. Bitter Root number seven. Now, we just talked about number six on the Bolo show this, this week. We also talked about those movie poster homage variants and how great those are. This one's going to have another kick-ass one too, huh, Jack? Yeah, we got a 1 in 10 incentive to the John Singleton classic Boys in the Hood. Um, great homage, something you don't see every day. Uh, you know, uh, definitely coming from a different perspective. Now, Bitter Root's an amazing series from a reader buzz perspective if you're not reading it. Yeah. again, Chuck I Brown, Sanford Green. Yeah, I implore you to pick that trade up um, and, and, and give it a look. But regardless to my variant heads, this is one to keep an eye out for. Um, it's, a, it's a one in 10 incentive. Uh, so a lower ratio book. But again, this is not a book at this point in its run that I think is getting like ordered in mass quantity at a lot of retailers. So there may be one, two, there may be three. But you're not going to see a ton of these at every, every shop. Um, and the shops that I have seen put solicits out for this, like Westfield Comics, they're charging like $18. So, so you're talking almost double ratio with a pre-order, pre-FOC. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, make sure you shop around for this. But we told you and we want you to be alerted to these. I really think these are going to be popular.
moving away from the Indian Smile Press, we're getting back over to the big two with Marvel and Outlaw number one. This is a one shot coming right out of that incoming event, but I'm anxious to read this. Plus, you never know with some of these one shots, they usually might set up something bigger going on, and then people go back later and buy these one shots because something that the character or some storyline that might be introduced in it. Either way, it's got some great covers, a great wraparound cover by Tony S. Daniel. That's the one I'm looking forward to picking up. Well, I, I'm excited for this because it features the younger generation of Marvel superheroes, which I like to read a lot of their stories, I think, for both Marvel and DC. Um, because we've talked about this, one of the hardest things for these big two comic publishers to do is age their heroes, which is why I'm so interested to see what DC does with this next generation of heroes. This could be a dumpster fire or the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, and there's kind of no in between. And um, Marvel does a lot of marketing of these young characters. They definitely know that there's money in them at the execution, um, though it's, it reminds me of the Philadelphia 76ers when they were building that, that team and they were saying, trust the process. Marvel hasn't rushed these characters out. They've done things like this. Um, they get used to seeing them. They get used to seeing them together, whether it's champions, um, whether it's young Avengers or um, at these various one shots that we've seen or a lot of crossover stories, right? So we've seen a lot of these characters in each other's books. Uh, I really like that wraparound variant where you get to see all of the characters, um, even the ones who aren't like featured on the cover of the solicit for this story. Um, so you're looking at everything from Spider Gwen to uh, Gwen Poole and everything in between. And uh, I really like that cover wraparound. I don't think secondary market is going to be a huge thing because I've noticed that covers that feature a lot of characters, Brian, don't tend to perform on the secondary market. Uh, there's some great Alex Ross ones. There's some, uh, there's one, there's a shield variant uh, from the like 2014 that comes to mind that had all the Marvel women and uh, it, more doesn't equal more when it comes to variant covers, but great for the PC. Yeah. But I also think it could be who, who knows, like reading tea leaves, right? But this might be like one of those Marvel point one type books where people go back to pick stuff up. But either way, I'm not a big fan of the Marvel events lately outside of I did like War of the Realms. Absolute Carnage was a decent read, but we're starting to hit that dull period again. So hopefully Outlawed sets up something great. And sticking with Marvel, we talked about this character on 3 Up, 3 Down last week, and we are talking about Spider-Woman with Spider-Woman number one. Not going to say her name the covers because there's about a cover for every day of the year, but either way, Spider-Woman number one, Jack, are you in on this? No, you know, to, for me, no. Um, the, I feel like this is, there's definitely a movement going with Spider-Woman, but it's never been a character that's really drawn me in. Uh, my Spider-Woman is Spider-Gwen. Um, but I, I just, I, I hope the character, I hope for everyone's sake, the character development for Spider-Woman continues to grow. We start to see more um, and hopefully we get her in a film and things like that. Um, but as far as like jumping on a new series, man, I'm already reading so many books um, for a Marvel book to get me on a character like this. I would need to see something with a, new, a creative team. That really excites me. To me, this reminds me of like Black Cat or some of the other series that are very similar. I feel like I've talked about this before. Um, these are oftentimes solicited because you're going to get the best cover artist. It's a pretty right? cover book. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you need that meat in the inside. And Black Cat is one I've talked about. Like people convinced me to read. I read. I think it's kind of fun. Um, but it, 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 it took time to get there. So I hope this one catches me off guard. I, I'll be paying attention to the variant market on some of these books, but um, yeah, to, to me, this isn't one. It's just one of those ones that gets released every five or six years for that reason. Yeah, I remember the last time um, they did the reboot as around the same time as the Spider-Verse came out yeah. and they had the new Spider-Woman. Then there's one issue where she had a costume change and that spiked for a little bit. Either way, like you said, I think there's a cover book. There's some gorgeous covers out there. Find the one you like and pick that one up. Either, But for the most part, I think I'm sitting Spider-Woman out this time. <laughs> yeah. 
Here we have resistance number one. This to me has a great trifecta. It's got a great cover A by Raza. You got a great writer in Straczynski. And you also have great interior art by Diodato Jr. And it's from a new up and coming publisher, Upshot. Now, within the past, what, eight months or so, you saw it in Baltimore. They were all over Baltimore Comic Con handing out these Upshot. It was like the preview book with a bunch of stories in it. There's been news about that preview book. People have been talking about it. Now we're starting to see some of those stories come out. We're going to talk about a couple of them in this video tonight, starting with Resistance. That's right. And I'll, tell you, I'll be the first one to tell you. Ready? Okay. Flip or fail. This is, this is a, a true admission. So when we were in Baltimore and they were passing out those samplers, I did get a couple. But, like, I, I really never paid attention to what they were handing us. So I, you, people, so many people try to hand you stuff at conventions. I One kinda free comic? Want a free comic? Yeah, I thought it was like some like janky creator type thing, I got to admit. And I didn't really pay any attention to it. I could, I got, every time, I, those people were some of the hardest working people. If anyone from Upshot watches this, your booth employees are some of the hardest working people I have seen because I got asked if I wanted that book probably 20 times. I probably could have had 20 copies. And I think you got, you're got you going to have some true firsts of like, six creative series in that book that's going to be uh one to keep an eye out for it's actually starting to spike on the secondary market already and i think it could continue but yeah so we're talking about resistance here we're going to be talking about all these upshot books the success of any of them really depends on the success of upshot and how they're able to market we've talked about this before independent comics is all about how you sell yourself um some of the stories can be great but it's going to be on the company to get their name out there. I think they've done a very good job so far. We, I've seen a lot of people talk about them since the whole Baltimore kind of like it was thrown in my face. Um, so I've seen some people post on Instagram. I've seen some people anticipating. Now the creative teams obviously are excited. They, the company boasts a tagline that it's like a company for creators by creators. So think image comics. If it was, you know, new, uh, and, uh, you know, kind of smaller scale where things are more manageable. So that's why you're getting these great teams. Now, the resistance, what's exciting about it is not only are we getting this creator owned um, kind of like new shop that's just going to be throwing out content because they've got a bunch of books coming, but we also get a shared universe. And it seems like different creators are going to collaborate on books that work in the shared universe. It's kind of an exciting idea. And I like some of the risks that publishers are taking, Brian, from TKO, who entered the market like a year or two ago, to what we're seeing with uh, Dinesh Shamdasani and his former team from Valiant with Bad Idea, to what we're seeing here with Upshot. So a lot of people doing things differently. They're not, they're not doing things the way everyone typically did them. So this shared universe could be cool. And here's the thing. If you at all have any belief that it could be, why not get in right now on the ground floor? Grab that issue number one. Grab, grab those first appearances because what today seems like a small creator-owned thing could be tomorrow's Valiant Comics or, you know, you, you, you never know. So you, you kind of, um, I'm willing to take that journey with a new publisher. I love independent comics and I love the entrepreneurial spirit within this marketplace. And it, like you said, you can't, that creative team is amazing. So I think we're going to see more of that, and I'm excited to talk about more of their books. Keeping with Upshot, we got Red Border number one. This, I keep saying this because I've just been watching it on Netflix, but kind of has Narcos slash Texas Chainsaw Massacre mashup, like they're trying to escape a cartel, but they get rescued and end up in a house of horrors. I'm hooked. I'm buying this book. But tell us more, Jack. Yeah, you know, I think that we're going to get kind of um, books released from Upshot that come from different points of view. So I think you're going to see that just within these first few books um, where the resistance you've got, um, you know, kind of a people driven story within the shared universe here with Red. Border, you're talking about a young middle-class Mexican couple targeted for death by the Juarez cartel, flee the border into Texas. They wander into a house of horrors beyond their wildest imagination, rescued by a mysterious local um, who takes them to safety at the family's ranch. The couple soon realize their hosts have more than just skeletons in their closet and an army of assassins at their tail. 
uh, seem to be the least of their problems. So it sounds like they're really ending up um, in the worst possible predicament. So definitely a horror feel. And, and that's the thing is when you're dealing with the level of pros, so you're talking about Jason Starr and Will Conrad, um, a lot of these names you're going to recognize from Image Comics, from, um, from the big two. Um, and, and that's where I say, like, this is definitely has a feel of an early days image. But these are people who know how to get some of these uh, properties uh, licensed. And um, we talk about all the time, Border's Hot. And I think the next book we talk about from Upshot, we're going to stay with that horror theme. Yeah, to me, this has like that found footage type feel. You ever watch those mm. horror movies of yeah. VHS? Yep. <laughs> it like seems like one of those stories you would find in one of those VHS movies. But either way, I'm excited to read this, and I'm definitely going to order this for Final Art Cutoff. So like Jack said, horror is hot right now, and it seems like Upshot's taking notice. We're talking about hotel number one, straight out of the Eagles song. You're going to check in, but you're not going to check out. Yeah, so this is another one where I think uh, Upshot is playing to that uh, horror market. But I got to be honest with you, this one to me screams HBO anthology series. I really like the way this uh, story is kind of set up because you, you kind of, instead of focusing on the individuals, you're focusing on the building. You're focusing on a location. Uh, so we're talking about hotel, and we're talking about hotel with two L's. Um, and you won't find it on any map, but if you happen to be driving down Route 66 late at night and you're truly desperate for shelter, sanctuary, or secrecy, you might see a battered sign on the side of the road, the Perot Courts Hotel, where many check in, but few check out. Um, so you don't know anything about this other than we've got a scary-ass hotel, um this again this bodes to me this is like that tales from the dark uh tales ice from the cream crypt, man you know electric black creep yeah, show you know this is and I, so i like this kind of story I, it's been proven to um be one that can hold up right you can tell these you can tell hundreds of these and also again for option uh you know as far as looking at whether it's an anthology series or one story within this book just one issue could end up being uh option for a movie so a lot of potential here writer john lees uh, i cannot pronounce the artist um but we have a cover from kara andrews that's another thing that the uh last one we talked about red border had tim bradstreet we got kara andrews here tim bradstreet does amazing cover i'll just say pestilence right so we are getting um, we are getting some high quality uh, cover art. Um, not sparing any expense here. We spared no expense. Um, so I really like these upshot releases. I'm going to give them a shot. Um, you got to get you got to give new people in the market that opportunity. Uh, but I think that they really have a lot going for them, and it'll be interesting to see how they are received in the market. Um, please, please let us know in the comments section if you have seen upshot if you've seen their stuff on social media um and if you will be checking out any of these releases sticking with the any small press we're moving over to dark horse with x-ray robots number one this is gonna be a four issue mini normally a dark horse mini i'm kind of like ah eh, but this is also written and drawn by Mike Allred. So then I goes like, ooh. So I'm interested in this one. Four issue many. Should be a good read. What do you think, Jack? Yeah, no disrespect. Um, Mike Allred just does not do it for me. I, it's on the list because Mike Allred is, he has his fan base, right? There's people who absolutely love his work, uh, Mike and Laura Allred. And, um, you know, it's fun, but it just, his kind of like universe of characters have never really done it. So first look deal at Netflix, it's worth mentioning. Um, animated properties are big right now. Uh, I think Michael Red's work kind of naturally plays into that world, but not for me, maybe it's for you. I'm interested in reading it, but I'll say, yeah, they got a first look deal with Netflix, but how much material are they gonna really get out of a four issue mini series to make an animated or anything like that, unless this four issue mini series is that good. I have to wait and see, but either way, 
I'm in it for the read. You're stepping out. I can totally understand that. But either way, let us know in the comments. Is this a book that you guys are going to be picking up? Here we are sticking with Dark Horse with Starship Down number one. Now, if you've been looking at these picks, be upfront and honest with you guys. It's kind of a slow week. There's probably a bunch of books out there that we were kind of like, you know, we could put that on the list. We couldn't, you know, maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't. Either way, these are a lot of reader picks for us this week. Starship Down, for me, happens to be one of those reader picks. Yeah, and, and honestly, like, it's one of those books that I probably overlook. Maybe even skip over. Uh, it's a you know, sci-fi drama. You're talking about a um, female archaeologist who's kind of like digging down in Siberia. Um, and she runs into political drama and drama with Russians um, and drama with the Vatican. But this, honestly, this elicits very vague to me. So it doesn't give me enough to say, man, I got I to read this series. And I'm sorry, guys. I know it feels like that we're, we are down on some of these books. And that's not the case. Um, and we want you sell us if there's any book that you feel like we're not giving it's just due sell us on it well, I, absolutely um, but it is what it is there's a there's a lot of ones where it's like yeah I'm going to continue reading this because I'm, I'm reading the series a book like X-Force number nine is on this this week's um, FOC things like that but uh, books to highlight that I think people are going to pay attention to obviously these independent number ones people are going to pay attention to so especially ever since Dark Horse got that first look deal with Netflix. To be honest with you, Dark Horse is a publisher for the most part I've overlooked. It's not, hasn't really been my favorite, but they, they're coming on the heels of a hit with Bang. So anything's possible. Um, it's, it's worth noting and paying attention to. So let us know in the comment section if we're not giving it, it's just due or if it's, you know, we'll probably check out, I'll probably check out, like you said, the first issue um, if I see, if I think about it. <laughs> I don't know if it's a rush to pre-order. This, honestly, I know this is the pre-FOC show, but this might be the grab it on release day if I, if it's sitting there. Yeah. It, this is definitely not the, the most, this isn't the Powerball week for FOC. That's for sure. No. Then get away from the independence back over to the big two. We're talking DC books and we're probably talking about one of the hottest titles in comics right now, especially given this past week. We're talking about Batman 91. This has that regular Jorge Menes cover as well as those gorgeous Francesco Matina cover B. But what are you going to tell us about this, Jack? Oh, well, you know what? This one's all about punchline. And to be honest with you, I'm not even talking about Batman 91. Um, Batman 91 is the, is the book that's on FOC this week. It, it, but the reason I want to talk about it is when I see the book on the list, it immediately makes me think, okay, that means that we are pre FOC on Batman 92. So again, all those hardcore speculators, this is what they hate when we do this, but we got to do it. It's the time seeing a book like this, making me think, well, now is the time to get ahead and have this conversation about Batman 92. So this is really why it's never too early to let your LCS know you want a book, that you don't wait till that weekend before if you absolutely know that you want a book. The fact that Batman 91 is on uh, pre-orders, make sure your LCS is well aware that you want Batman 92. Now, why would you want Batman 92? Punchline's on the cover. That's 94. That's what we know. That's what everyone's- shows up on 92 cover too. Okay, but Batman, the reason why we really want it is I really think that's going to be the first full appearance. We found out with an interview with James Tinian, uh, this weekend's Comics Pro, there's a lot of information going to be flowing out um, all over. The, that's going to really affect the comics market. And one of the things that was, an article came out, he did an interview. I don't know where he did the interview with, but I've seen it cut and posted all over social media. That punchline is going to appear kind of in stages. So we got kind of the panel with the eyes, the one panel or two panels. And then we're going to get a full reveal in Hell Arisen 3, a la Hulk 180. But if you don't call Hulk 180 a first appearance, if that's not enough, you cannot call Hell Arisen 3 a first appearance based on what I think, think, I don't know for sure, but what I think we're going to see based on what I'm reading from James Tinian. So Batman 92 is when we're going to see that real 
first reveal of punchline in full doing whatever it is that she's going to be doing. I'm not saying that that book is going to surpass Hell Arisen 3 or Batman 89. I don't think it will. I think that the ship has sailed. You guys know about comics politics. We've talked about it. Once people got their money invested in a certain place, it's very hard to move the needle, even when logic is involved. Um, my suggestion would be, though, if you missed the boat on 89 and you wanted a piece of it, 92 is going to be another opportunity to possibly um, score a book that's going to go over cover price pretty early. Um, if this punchline heat continues, you see the ridiculous prices being paid for Hell Arisen 3. Um, I said on the Bolo show that it was going to go up. I had no idea that it was going to go up to like double the levels that we already saw in Batman 89. Um, this is one of the most remarkable and ridiculous but fun things I've seen um, in the community. I think some people are going to get burnt, but either way, I know there's some people out there making money, so kudos to you if you're out there making money. Um, we'll see how this 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 kind of winds up. But uh, Batman 92 is one to pay attention to. It's one to pre-order. It's one I will be pre-ordering. Um, and the fact that 91 is on the FOC right now it's never too early to, to, to pay attention to it because you nothing sucks more, Brian, than that book you've been thinking about. And all of a sudden you realize it's Tuesday and that FOC passed because that that's the worst. Now you're paying three ninety nine dollars cover price if you can find it. Yeah, and like you said, we talked about 94. That's going to be that Art Germ cover. I will tell you, if you're a Punchline fan and you want Art Germ cover, our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics, has that up on his website right now. You can get single issues, or he's also selling packs of five of those. So that also kind of tells you I'm sure he's probably not the only one doing that. So we're going to see a lot of Art Germ 94 issues out there. For sure. For sure. So there's our 10 picks. And as we always do at this time, we talk about the additional prints. I don't even know how we're going to get through all these additional prints this week. But, Jack, I'm sure you're going to give it the old college try, so have at it. Well, Brian's joking because it's actually a very light week compared to what we've seen the last few weeks where Marvel's been heavy on those additional printings. This week we're getting one from Boom Studios with Alienated number one, the third printing, the second printing with a quick sellout. They went to a third printing. We get Gwen Stacy number one from Marvel with a second printing. We got Thor from Marvel with number three with a second print. And we've also got Wolverine number one with a second print. Going back to second print extremely quick after that first print. So there it is, guys. That's our 10 picks plus the additional prints. Real quick, we've talked about on the Bolo Show and we talked about on 3 Up, 3 Down this week. We have exclusive t-shirts available right now. We listen to you, the viewer, talking about wanting some swag. Not only that, but this is limited edition swag, right? That's right. If you don't get it in that pre-order window, it will never be printed again. And we did this to... You know, we heard, listen to you guys, and, and you guys thought that the, the exclusive t-shirt we did through our Patreon program was really cool. There's only so many of those out there. It's not one of those things where you're going to see it everywhere. So having that exclusive cool carnage uh, t-shirt was something that we enjoyed doing and we wanted to, as we did our merch program, we wanted to bring some of that kind of exclusivity back. So we've got our standard shirts, our AKA Mr. Bolo shirt, our Simpleman's Comics shirt. We will have that on the website uh, in perpetuity. But if you want those special edition, that Bolo Club, Snake Eyes, Bullet Club, New Japan Pro Wrestling homage, or that Haunted Attorney, a Chamber of Chills, Masters of the Universe homage, you need to get those now. You've got till the end of March to get those pre-orders in before those numbers are locked, and we will be shipping those in April. Yeah, and for our Patreon members, don't you worry. We're going to have another exclusive shirt just for you guys coming very soon as well. So with that being said, this has been Last Call. This is Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics. I'll see you guys in the next video.